Bosses in the UK's top 100 companies earned as much in the first few days of this year than their average employee will by the end of December. Is it time for a change? Welcome to Roundtable. Hello and a very warm welcome from me, David Foster. If you need to know about income inequality, a look at executive pay could well tell you quite a lot. Company bosses earning sometimes a hundred times what their lowest paid staff do. Could pay ratios be the answer? The UK's top bosses take just three days to earn the average worker's yearly salary, according to new research. The US tops the list of the biggest pay gaps between CEO and worker, with the average top boss earning $287 for every one given to the average employee. Under new regulations, UK companies with over 250 employees must report pay ratio figures. In the US, Congresswoman Barbara Lee has introduced a bill to limit executive pay to 25 times that of a company's lowest paid worker. In 2010, former UK Prime Minister David Cameron proposed a similar 20 to 1 pay ratio in the UK public sector. So are pay ratios the answer to income and wealth inequality? Let's get talking. Joining us from New York, we have Morris Pearl, Chair of Patriotic Millionaires. In the studio, Luke Hilliard, Director of the High Pay Centre, which analyses salaries at the top of UK business. Stephen Bevan here too from the Institute for Employment Studies, who's written on executive pay. And we also welcome Rachel Oliver, Head of Campaigns at Positive Money, who believes pay inequality is bad for economics and society. Great to have you all, all with us here. Morris Pearl, let me come to you first of all. What is a patriotic millionaire? Sure. We have a group of hundreds of wealthy business people and investors here in the United States, and we're really concerned that the growing inequality is causing a breakdown of society. It could soon cause civil unrest, and we have to do something about it. As a millionaire, are you not representative of an unequal society? Well, sure, I'm representative of an unequal society, but that's part of the problem is that so many of our fellow Americans don't have the opportunities for their children and grandchildren to grow up the way I did. We were talking in the introduction to the program about pay ratios. You were head of BlackRock, massive investment firm, where I imagine everybody earned quite a bit of money. Was there ever a question of you earning 100 times more than uh, the lowest paid employee? Well, I was never the head of BlackRock. And... Yeah, the current, the person who is the head of BlackRock is Larry Fink, and he does earn a hundred times what the lowest paid employee does, right? Is that fair? Well, it's not a question of fairness. He actually, he was the founder of the firm. He owns a big part of it. Um, and even the lowest paid employee is making a lot more than minimum wage here in the United States. But it does lead to gross inequality. And we have a few people who are becoming very, very, very rich and wealthy. And we have lots of people who are really not doing so well. And that, in the long run, is not good. Because we, the investors and people who want to get wealthy from investments and businesses, need lots of people who have enough money to pay their bills every month. I'm becoming wealthy because there's millions of people out there who are paying their iPhone bills every month and making their mortgage payments every month, and that money trickles up into my checking account. Okay, we'll come back to you, Morris. Thanks for that for now. Feel free any time to, to say anything else. We'll always bring you in. But I want to come back to your ideas for changing this a little bit later after I've just thrown this one at you. I mean, Luke, you may want to start it. Uh, does it matter what bosses earn? Yeah, I think it is important. Uh, I think how... Um, wealth is created and distributed in society is a matter of public interest and it's that's at the root of all sort of politics and economics really so I think um, it is a topic we should be discussing. Um, CEO pay relative to worker pay isn't entirely a zero-sum game but obviously companies resources are, are, are not infinite 
if they're spending ever more uh, on the, you know, on their CEOs, on their heads of particular divisions and markets, etc., that is going to have an impact on how much is uh, is left over for those in the middle and at the bottom. So it's not just a case of, um, you know, blind rage at people who happen to be wealthier and more successful than than the rest of us, but also, um, you know, it's relevant to the debate about how do we raise living standards. I think it was a report by your group at the beginning of this year that led us to mm -hmm. want yeah. to talk about this. What were you trying to say when you showed the massive disparity between those at the bottom and those at the well, top? Well, I think we're trying to capture the fact that the typical CEO in the UK uh, earns 117 times more than the uh, than the typical full time UK worker, uh, and the, the the way we try to sort of frame that and to uh, you know to make it um, capture people's imagination, as it were, was to uh, show at what point in the year uh, they would overtake the amount that the average in worker could expect to expect to earn days, in, in the entire year. Exactly, January the sixth, we put it the third uh, working day of the year around five o'clock on the on the third day of working day of the year so when you know christmas is still fresh in the in the memory for most people uh going back to uh to work still feels like a bit of a slog to think that somebody uh running up one of our big companies has already earned more than you will make all year is um it, it's quite striking and i think yeah. while not everybody yeah you know, i don't think anyone would argue that everyone should be paid the same and that people uh in uh demanding positions with greater responsibility shouldn't be rewarded for that. I think that, that balance of an so, entire salary in three days is slightly out So what do you kilter. do here? Do you cut the chief executive's pay or do you put the pay of the lowest paid or average employee up and still leave the chap at the top earning an awful lot? Well, the question you have to ask is whether it makes economic sense. And it's becoming abundantly clear that that just it doesn't make economic sense. As, as we heard before, the trickle down is just not happening. So what we need to do is look at where the huge inequalities are coming from and the impact that that is having on our economies and our societies. It's really clear that such huge inequality is problematic on society's psychological well-being, on crime rates, and it, in fact, has a direct connection with lower productivity in our economy. And, and Morris is nodding at that, and we'll come back to you, Morris. I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that you, you agreed with that. But my question t to you, Rachel, was do you bring the top guy's money, top guy or woman's money down, or do you put the bottom uh, wages up if you say inequality is, is the problem? So it's probably going to be a combination of both of those things. We've seen paid ratio disclosure starting to starting to happen but it's clearly not that's in the uk as of the beginning of this year yes and but that clearly that isn't isn't enough and what we actually need is, is to go further so ideas such as pay caps higher taxes on extortionate earnings um because the truth of the matter is if you have one person who's earning a huge amount of money they can't spend that much money on things that actually get the economy moving there's only a small number of things that they can actually spend their money so on you think their pay should be cut to some extent well absolutely okay. it's, nobody needs that amount of money in their pocket Let, you let's know? bring steve in um yeah don't you pay a boss what he what you think he's worth or she um yeah well it, i guess there's a question about the labor market um, and what is the labour market for chief executives? And part of the, the defence of, of high pay is that um, we're living in an international labour market where we're competing for the very best talent, and therefore, for, from UK position, you know, the FTSE 100 needs to attract the best from around the world. I, I think the problem is, and I think Luke might know more about this than, than me, but the most recent look I took at that is that you know, there is almost no international mobility of CEOs. Um, the labour market, this idea of a labour market, a, a competitive labour market for CEOs, is vastly overstated. Do so you reckon they're talking their pay up by making themselves seem worth more? Well, than I think there's are. a. You could argue that you know. Some Morris, I'm back with you in just a second. Some remuneration consultants, you might argue, uh, have a vested interest um, in in perpetuating this. Um, lots of remuneration committees, I think. Um, have, until relatively recently, um, flown under the radar in terms of corporate governance. I think the HR profession, um, in some ex to some extent, have been asleep at the wheel in terms of this. And for me, the big question is about what's proportionate. Um, it's not about levelling up or down. It's about proportionate um, pay relative to the, the size and the responsibility of the jobs that these people are doing 
and also the performance that they drive. And I, I think I would reject this notion that we have this hero model of leadership, that there's one person at the pinnacle of the organization uh, who takes all the, all the credit for the organization being successful. They can't achieve success without collective effort. And I think the research pretty clearly shows that if there's wide pay dispersion that doesn't have the consent of the workforce, you undermine collaboration. Okay, let, let's go back to Morris, because I don't want to miss the point that you wanted to join in on earlier. Uh, but then we'll come to the point that Steve makes is that it's, it's a team effort, which I'm sure you agree with. But what was it you wanted to say a few minutes ago? Well, I, I agree with what all of you are saying. I think that it is leading towards all kinds of problems and that those people who are being paid the most are sort of killing the goose that lays the golden eggs. In that they need this huge group of consumers to be able to buy stuff and afford to pay for stuff in order to justify those huge salaries they make. Here in the United States, our allies are sponsoring laws to actually change the corporate tax rate based on the ratio of pay between the lowest and highest paid people. So those corporations can either pay their lower paid workers more or reduce the pay of their highest paid people, typically the CEO, in order to reduce their corporate taxes a little bit. And that's something we're proposing as an incentive to reduce this egregious mm. ratio of pay between the lowest and highest paid people. Morris, I think to be a patriotic millionaire, you have to continue earning a million dollars a year. So if I wanted to get Morris Pearl to come and work for a day for David Foster, Inc., would $200, $500 a day seem a little bit too much or too little? Well, I'd be happy to come help you out for a day, David. But, Could I um, afford it? Sure. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about, even at that rate, pay a few hundred thousand dollars a year. We're not talking about needing tens of millions of dollars a year. There's no shortage of people willing to take jobs that pay two or three million dollars a year here in the United States or in the UK. And you don't need to pay people 20, 30, 100 million dollars a year in order to get them to take jobs, believe me. Okay, your solution's coming up in, in just a moment. Um, Stephen, you, you said people are waking up to this. You look at the UK, is it doing any good? Um, I think the evidence is that there's more shareholder scrutiny of this um, and the regulations around this have empowered shareholders a little bit more over the last few years. So there are certainly more awkward questions being asked at AGMs. Um, I think some of the institutional investors are looking at this uh, quite a lot more, more critically. So pension funds and so on asking more serious questions about um, how remuneration is set. Um, and the transparency of that. Now, they may not necessarily always argue about the level, but I think the process by which senior executive pay is um, managed and determined and how transparent that process is, is a really important part of this whole equation. I would definitely agree with what Stephen has just said. I think there has been some progress. I think it's certainly um, the pay setting process at the top is much more accountable. Of the various stakeholders involved, chiefly the shareholders, and the um, corporate boards are much more conscious of the gap between the top and the middle and the bottom when they're setting top pay. I guess the only thing I'd add to that is that the progress has been painfully slow. So, for example, this year we saw the point at which CEO earnings overtake the UK average uh, annual salary move from midday on the third working day last year to tea time. So, uh, you know, who knows, maybe sooner or later we'll get to the point where they have to work a, a whole week um, but I think, uh, I think there's a sort of um, serious point under, underlying that, which is that um, there has been this increased uh, engagement on the part of shareholders in particular, but they're not a homogenous body. Uh, and there are very definitely some laggards on that. To give you an example, um, the case, the, the, probably the most high profile case of egregiously high executive pay in the UK was that of um, Jeff Fairburn, the uh, CEO of Persimmon, the house builder. Uh, they put in place a sort of huge, uh, hugely generous incentive payment uh, policy for him. The government then began pumping uh, millions of pounds into the house building sector through the help to buy scheme. Of course, if the government is indirectly pumping uh, millions of pounds into your company, the share price is gonna go up. Uh, which it did far more than anyone could have seen, and uh, and the CEO uh, pocketed tens of millions as a result of you know 
uh, improvement of company performance that had very little to do with him. Which wasn't um, actually a reality, wasn't it? Ex exactly. He, uh, he, he pocketed it all. Himself. But what I was going to say was that while there was a lot of shareholder criticism of that uh, pay package and that pay award, it did actually get voted through by a Well, you know why? Because actually the share price was going up and the shareholders didn't want to create too exactly. much of a wave. And they, exactly. And so they, it's self-interest as well. Exactly. And they're, they're not entirely... Uh, you know, it's their sort of self-interest, which is not necessarily the same as the uh, the, the interests mm. of wider society. Morris, listen to this one. It's a phrase you may not have heard in the United States, but it's one that's quite common in this country. Um, we are accused, the British, of wanting to cut down the tallest poppies to the level of the lowest. Isn't there an element of this, that there are high achievers who deserve to grow taller than the rest, not to be brought back down to the level of the mediocre? I mean... As Steve said before, I just think most people are fully aware that that's not the case anymore. You know, it's not just down to one person. It's a whole team of people. And you have to ask, you know, are CEOs really 120 times more, adding more, 120 times more value than the rest of their workers? Um, probably not. And, and what... We have to ask whether the business would work without them. Well, I think what's clear is that the... The most recent studies have shown that there is like a very negligible impact, absolutely tiny, on us having 117 times more pay ratio as opposed to, say, 30 or 40 or something that's more reasonable. We've seen this absolutely balloon in the last 20 years. And the only people who are really better benefiting are the very few people at the top. Why do you think it's gone up so exponentially? Well... This is part of a much wider systemic problem with our economy. We have an economy that is programmed at the moment to The serve Western world or the UK? The Western world, okay. of which the UK is, is, is hugely um, significant. We have, we have in, in terms of this economic dynamic and this economic system that we have, because we have an ec economy that is programmed to serve the interests of corporates and big banks over the vast majority of the rest of us. And pay inequality is a part of that picture, but a much bigger part of that picture is wealth inequality, which is absolutely huge. Today Pin we're simply talking about pay inequality. I, well, have, to, I have to rein you back a little bit because the two are... They are linked, but not they're absolutely. They're absolutely linked, and they're, they're about ultimately this huge issue of inequality which is so problematic can and we, we go to morris to... on this one now just just sure. just to ask him Sorry, about could, inequality could i just come yeah, yeah, in yeah, on yeah, that quickly. Quickly, then i'll be with you morris. very quickly on that point you made it look uh, you know if the company don't get the right people or if the ceo leaves the company falls apart that's surely a sign of a terribly run company if it if the if it's so dependent on one individual that the board haven't made contingency plans uh for them to walk away. Because okay. I, I, get, I get that one. Well, Morris, what about inequality? Uh, your plans to end it when it comes to um, the level of pay throughout a company structure? Well, we have no plans to end inequality. We would just like to see a little bit less inequality. As I said, I think it's perfectly reasonable the best are 50 or 100 times more valuable than the average person, but not 200 or 1,000 times. So I think there is something to be said there that the CEOs often control the board, which sets their own pay, in a much more direct way. It's kind of as if you were setting your own pay, of course you'd be liable to set it higher and think that everything that happens that's good is your own personal responsibility and that someone else caused everything bad. Because there's no objective pay setting, there's no one above the CEO because the boards at huge number of companies are more dependent on the CEO to get their board positions if, than they if, are sort of overseeing the CEO and supervising. If you were very confident of your own ability, as most chief executives would have to be, would it not be a demonstration of your belief in the workforce and of your ability to do the job if you said, actually, I'm going to cut my pay to only five times what the average is, is here, and I'll take my incentives elsewhere by using my money to buy the shares in a company that's successful? Well, I've never been the CEO of anything, but when I've been working at highly paid jobs, most of my pay has been part of, you know, ownership of the company and the paid in stock of the company, which has fortunately, through partially my efforts and partially the efforts of many people, become more valuable during the time that I've owned it. So, yes, in many cases, the most, most um, wealthy CEOs, the Zuckerbergs of the world, are wealthy not because of their pay, 
but because they own huge amounts of these very valuable companies. Yeah, which they are given as part of their remuneration package in an awful lot of instances. I, I, I want to go to David Cameron, former prime minister here. Um, he wanted it to be 20 to 1. Is that ever realistic when you're talking about, what is it now, 100 and something? Well, he wanted it to be 20 to 1 in the public sector. Um, so I was part of the project that um, took on that brief uh, with Will Hutton when I was uh, working at the Work Foundation. And we uh, looked very hard at whether or not a, a 20 to 1 pay ratio would work. And that was um, quite an interesting exercise because actually at the time, there wasn't anybody paid more than 20 to 1. Um, and even Nobody in the top 100 companies. No, no, paid. in the public sector. Oh, in the public, in the public sector. sector. Oh, yeah. um, now, what we've seen in the public sector, I know that this is not exactly you know, what we're talking about, but if you look at foundation trust hospitals and universities, where they've been given more freedom over pay setting for senior people, that's where pay dispersion broadened. But what we decided was that f fixing a pay ratio of 20 to 1 wouldn't work because it would mean that organisations would be tempted to basically outsource all the low paid jobs, which would mean the arithmetic of where the ratio went would change. And also that the 20 to 1 ratio would be a target. So you'd have chief executives of um, government departments or agencies or other bits of the public sector saying to their remuneration committees, 20 to 1 is now the, the going rate. Um, and so we were very cautious about imposing that, um, that ratio. Um, and what instead we proposed, there would be a set of rules about clawing back pay um, from people like, you know, the, the example that Luke quoted, where people have been rewarded for failure, if you like, or have they left an organisation after... And what did you make of that? Um, feasible I, or not? I think it's turned out to be less feasible than we'd hoped. So, so do we have here a situation where um, there is supposedly more transparency um, and shareholders are more on top of it, but we've established that shareholders perhaps have self-interest at heart uh, when it comes to voting up remuneration pay. Are we not in this sort of slightly hypocritical world of saying it's terrible, but at the same time not wanting to do very much about it? I mean, I think you're absolutely right. It, we haven't gone nearly far enough at looking at the, the root causes of inequality and, and unfair pay systems, and, and we need to go much further. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And um, I think there's more we could do around uh, trade union access for the lowest paid workers in uh, on zero hour contracts in the gig economy, etc. If you look at the um, share of the total incomes going to the um, top 1% uh, in the UK compared to levels of trade union membership, they almost sort of rise and fall in perfect harmony. The sort of message I'm getting here is that it, 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 it's agreed that it's not so great to have people paid a lot of money because it creates bad economic situation, it also creates less incentive, etc, etc. But the reality surely is that uh, it's going to be pretty much impossible to change it. Sure. I mean, investors, shareholders voting, they don't want to rock the boat. For a billion dollar company, what's a few tens of millions of dollars you pay to the CEO more or less? It's nothing that would actually affect the shareholder value. But I think we here in the United States, and probably in the UK too, we're concentrating more on changing some of the things you just talked about in increasing the power of labor unions and increasing the pay at the bottom. And that's the way that we think will actually make a difference in the, uh, you know, in the well-being of everyone yeah. here. Rachel, it's here to stay, isn't it? Can't do much about it. I would disagree with that. I think that the way we measure value in our economy needs to change. I think. As Luke but that's upon. aspirational rather than realistic. I would totally disagree with that as well. I think that, you know, we, we've created an economy in a certain way. We've designed it in a certain way. We can redesign it in a way that functions for society, not just for the CEOs and the shareholders, but for all of the people in society. Which brings me back to a point I was going to make, that unless you vote in a socialist government, um, simple economics and capitalist... No, I, think that, I think that one of the lessons from the crash has been that corporate governance uh, needs a real look at. And I, I think, you know, it's interesting that in the UK we have record low capital investment by our corporates. It's at a 14 year low. Um, and we've got a big productivity problem. The two things you're supposed to do, we've got low productivity, invest in capital, invest in skills. And they're, they're at the lowest for a long time. What's happening is a lot of companies are buying back their own shares. Lo and behold, their shares are linked to their CEO pay. And that is part of the engine room of um, this inequality continuing. Four people in your organisation, I guess you all know what each one 
each yeah, one earns. Yeah. You're the head of it. You're not getting a hundred times, hundred and seventy times more than yeah. the lowest paid, are you? Certainly not. No, we uh, we live our values in terms of fair pay. Uh, I think um, I'm, you know. I'd like to think I'm both realistic and optimistic about this. You talked about uh, a socialist government. We've had a conservative government for the past 10 years, and they didn't go as far on corporate governance reform as I'd have liked, but they, there, was, there have been a lot of um, sensible measures and improvements around transparency. I think from a more philosophical point of view, I think we need to um, change our understanding of how wealth is created. It's not these sort of a tiny number of heroic godlike entrepreneurs it's through the collective endeavor uh, of, of everybody and through sort of, uh you know both private enterprise and, and public investment and that requires a, a fair fairer pay Listen, culture thank you all very much indeed you probably think i didn't give each one of you in, enough time but it's my job just to move it around and morris we appreciate you joining us from new york rachel here in the studio thank you very much stephen and Luke, the question is, will fat cats, I suppose, still get the cream or are we looking at diet boardrooms in the future? From me, David Foster, from the Roundtable team, goodbye for now.